Over the last couple of years, GMC has been rapidly expanding their premium off-road trim level known as the AT4X. Now for 2024, it grows literally to now include a heavy-duty version known as the 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 HD AT4X AEV. I know that is a huge mouthful, but what that essentially means is we now have a heavy-duty truck that has nearly 12 inches of ground clearance, an available V8 or diesel powertrain, and a bunch of boron steel skid plates to protect the truck underneath. So if you guys have always needed the capability of a three-quarter ton truck, but you want to go a little further off the beaten path, how does this brand new 2024 Sierra AT4 X stand stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, GMC introduced this version of the Sierra HD back in 2020. For so for 2024, it is getting its first round of updates. And before we start talking about the exterior styling changes, let me go ahead and remind you guys what's underneath this massive hood. Now, as you can see, I'm a pretty short guy. I'm five foot seven, so this truck just basically makes me look even smaller. But underneath this hood, we have an optional engine. Now, this is one of the few heavy-duty off-road factory-built trucks where you can actually get it with a diesel engine upgrade. Basically, you can take a picture either a 6.6 liter gas V8 or this 6.6 liter turbo diesel V8 as well, which is actually a $10,000 upcharge. In this uh, vehicle here, this truck, it makes 470 horsepower and 975 pound-feet torque. Remember, this is a heavy duty three-quarter ton truck, so you basically want all that additional torque. If you guys are keeping score of the competition, this has more power versus the Ram 2500, but less power versus the high output versions of the power stroke that you're gonna find in the Ford Super Duties. Now, the cool thing about this uh, engine it's paired up with a 10 speed allison built automatic transmission so that's up to two to four more gears versus some of the competition uh, and uh, fuel economy is not be, is not required of course because this is such a heavy duty truck but the beauty about this vehicle here is gmc says this truck will tow a maximum of 18,500 pounds now technically it's 18,400 pounds when you have the aev package uh, you'll also be able to haul as much as 3,300 pounds of payload in the bed that's almost twice the capacity versus what you're going to find in something like the ram power wagon. So there's a reason why, again, this truck here has its strengths over the competition. Now, in terms of the curb weight, obviously this is no lightweight truck. In fact, it's so heavy that it's not required to be rated by the EPA for fuel economy reasons. And as this truck sits, it weighs in at just under 9,000 pounds. So let's go ahead and close up this hood here and talk about the exterior styling. Now, being that this one here is the diesel, you can see the hood has some functional air intakes here that allows for additional cooling. Uh, for the diesel engine, you can see the front fascia, the grille is unique on the AT4X models. You can see it's kind of got like the blacked out accents with the dark chrome, the AT4X badge over here. And then all the uh, Sierra 2500s, like this one here, come standard with the company's revised full LED headlights. You can see it has that new design for the LED daytime running light, LED low and high beam projectors, which is nice. Uh, and then you also have LED turn signals and you have LED fog lights down here. You can see the uh, AEV version, which as you guys know, AEV is an aftermarket uh, off-road manufacturer. Uh, they essentially put on a new steel bumper at the front, which does improve the approach angles. You also have integrated recovery hooks. And then underneath here, there's a bunch of boron steel uh, skid plates completely covering it underneath the truck. Those skid plates are about three to four times stronger versus the standard skid plates that you're, you're going to find on other Sierra models. Again, it's going to improve the capability. There's a total of 11.7 inches of ground clearance on this truck. So again, you have a little more ground clearance, but it's still looking at just under a foot, which is definitely a ton. Now looking at the side profile, if you guys want the AT4X AEV, you have to choose it in this configuration. So it's a 2500 and it's a crew cab with the standard six foot eight inch long bed. So at 159 inches long in the wheelbase and around 250 inches long, this is again a huge vehicle. It's around a foot longer than something like a half ton truck. There's a reason why again, you go to a bigger vehicle like this and you can see the AEV version also includes a unique wheel. These are the 18 inch kind of gloss black Salta wheels. That's what uh, AEV calls it. And it's riding on a 35 inch tall Goodyear uh, Wrangler Monterrain tire. Uh, you can, the wheels are also beadlock capable. Uh, you have a independent front suspension, solid axle at the back, and you also have the Multimatic DSSV dampers. That's what uh, AT4Xs have always been known for. It's essentially sharing that technology with the its twin, which is known as the Silverado 2500 ZR2 Bison. Now, looking over here, you can see there's a badge here to show which engine you have that you chose. This one here, again, has the Duramax 6.6 liter diesel. You've got these really large tow mirrors, which is gonna help for you if you guys are planning to tow uh, large loads, which most of you plan to do that when you have a heavy duty truck. Uh, and then above me here, which I can barely reach it, uh, there's 
a standard size sunroof. You cannot get a panoramic sunroof on this vehicle, uh, which I believe is something that some of the competition offers. So that's something that GMC, I was hoping would eventually add. You can see over here, there's a nice little step to kind of help short people like myself access the actual bed. Uh, and then the truck here is so wide, uh, you're gonna find those marker lights around the vehicle to kind of showcase, you know, just the width of the vehicle. Now looking at the rear of the truck, you can see it's got an equally revised tail light tail light design where it's a full LED. It's also got this kind of like wrap, this matte black wrap over the multi-pro tailgate. Uh, this is exclusive to the AEV edition. You can see there's AEV badging over here. It has the usual badging there for Sierra AT4X and whatnot. The steel bumper here is also modular. It's included when you guys go for the AEV package. This is how you know that you have this special AEV model. And then underneath here, you're gonna find a full-size matching spare, which is a 35 inch tall tire. You're gonna want that if you guys actually plan to do some off-roading. It's, it's definitely necessary. Now uh, the tow hitch is also included. Remember this truck here will tow a maximum of 18,400 pounds. Now looking at the bed of the truck you can see this is a six foot eight inch long bed and it carries up up to 3,300 pounds in the actual bed. That's the payload capacity. That's almost twice the capacity of the Ram Power Wagon. So there's a reason why again GMC has some huge advantages over the Ram. It's a very usable bed but if you guys want the longer over eight foot long bed you cannot get it in the AEV package. You can see because this is the um, uh, AT4 or, or model because it has the multi-pro tailgate, you can see it, it gives you the ability to kind of open up this. There's a little bit of a step here. You can also adjust this way in like six different ways where you can kind of uh, increase the flexibility back here. Uh, and then uh, you can see that some here has a spray and bed liner. So in terms of the capability and practicality, obviously, this is one of the reasons why you go for the three quarter ton trucks. So moving on to the interior of the Sierra 2500 HD. First of all, getting in this truck, you really learn to appreciate the power retractable running boards because for short people like myself, it definitely makes getting in and out a lot easier. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk and you can hear the usual GM uh, bongs here and there. Now here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see this is the current GMC key fob. Uh, it is their intelligent access key. It has the usual buttons for unlock, lock, remote start. You can also open up the lift gate and activate the panic feature to start the vehicle up. You can see the button is right here. It's a interesting rectangle shape. Uh, but once you turn the vehicle on, you can see the interior is pretty identical to a regular Sierra 1500. Um, in fact, GMC gave this truck the full redesign for the interior, which is a huge improvement over the pre-facelifted truck. You can see the AT4X comes with this unique interior color. This is called Obsidian Rush, where it has kind of a black interior with the contrast white stitching and piping and also some red stitching. These seats are also heated and ventilated. They adjust in 10 different ways. You have three person or two person memory here on the driver's side, which is nice. And then you also have a heated steering wall along with the heated and cooled seats, which is definitely nice. In terms of the door panel materials, you can see on the AT4X, you have kind of a leather stitching area here on the door panel. You have this really nice dark finished matte wood with some real metal trim. It's padded over here as well. You have one touch up down for both of the front windows, but not for the rear. And the window controls, they feel relatively high quality and tactile. Um, in terms of the rest of the dashboard here, you can see you have the same kind of stitching carried over onto the actual upper portion here. It's soft touch, you have more of that wood. And then there's this really interesting area here where you have an extra glove compartment here in addition to the one down below. You can see more of that leather is kind of carried through. There is some piano black plastic areas, but really the star of this new interior has to be the new screen. So you have a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster here, along with a 13.4 inch touchscreen here that has their latest Android based operating system, which is also powered by Google. Um, it includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see my phone is connected nicely. However, you cannot actually expand the CarPlay to take up the entire screen. If you guys want this to take up the entire screen, you have to go to like something like the GPS function where you can uh, kind of make the side screen, the split screen go away. Again, this is a good size, but I do wish the CarPlay allowed you to kind of expand it to do a full screen, which would be nice. But you can see here, the truck has so many different multiple camera views. In fact, there's 14 different camera views. The resolution is also great. You can see around the truck, side to side, you can do a tow hitch mode. You can also see underneath the truck. Uh, you can see in the bed as well, if you guys have something that's you're carrying around in the bed. So a lot of great features, a lot of great tech. Um, this is where GMC gave this truck a huge upgrade for 2024, which is really nice. The steering wheel you can see uh, is basically the same wheel that you find on other Sierra models. You can see there's some aluminum trim here. It's a heated steering wheel along with the contrasting stitching. Uh, the wheel itself has just a manual tilt and telescoping adjustment. Kind of crazy considering how expensive this truck is, but uh, it's got a very thin, re uh, thin rimmed steering wheel along with your column mounted gear shifter here. You can see this controls the 10 speed automatic. No manual mode uh, in terms of paddles, but you do have like a little toggle here 
where you can adjust, uh, the, go through the 10 different gears. Uh, down over here, you can see controls for your heated and cooled seats. You have dual zone climate control, uh, lots of hard buttons, which is nice. You can also turn on and off the exhaust brake, the lane departure alert. You have some more storage over here along with USB charging, uh, which is great. This kind of area here, because there's no shifter, frees it up to give you a little bit more storage. You also have your trailer brake controller here. Your wireless phone charging pad is here along with your cup holders. And then you can see here, big center console area with a padded, uh, padded area where you could rest your elbows. And then if you open this up, you can see big storage in there along with two more USB charging ports and actual power outlet. I have seen bigger storage areas and competitors like the Ford F250, but you can see this is still certainly very usable. The seats are also very comfortable and supportive. Uh, I like how they're kind of tailored to fit people of wider frames so you can kind of get comfortable in this vehicle easily. Um, and then in terms of the stereo system, it's just a 12 speaker Bose stereo system with metal speaker covers. It's nothing super special, but again, for those of you who are audiophiles, you'll appreciate that. The headliner is even covered in this kind of like woven material, or this kind of mouse fur material, so it feels more upscale. The grab handles here are also wrapped in leather. So again, it kind of reminds you that the AT4X tries to be basically a premium truck, but also tries to be an off-road truck as well. And I think most people when they get into this vehicle are gonna find a ton of tech features and a ton of luxury. It's going to surprise you because the front seats also are massaging. And this is really the only truck in the segment, I believe, that gives you massaging seats with the off-road capability. Now, because this truck only comes as a crew cab configuration, it does have a very usable back seat. Now, obviously, you're probably noticing with nearly a foot of ground clearance, it's kind of hard to get into this truck. Thankfully, GMC has put these power retractable steps to help short people like myself get into this truck. So once you open the door, any of the doors, that will basically expand to give you space to actually get back here. And I have to say, this is definitely one of the biggest back seats in the class. I mean, just kind of like the other competitors, you have 43.6 inches of legroom. 43.6 is essentially the same legroom that you get in the front seat. So as you can see here for somebody my height, I can basically stretch out here. I've got plenty of foot space, plenty of legroom, uh, plenty of headroom space because there is no panoramic sunroof. There's actually a little area here where GMC has carved out the uh, roof liner to kind of give you even more headroom space and then materials quality back here you can see beautiful soft touch leather more of that beautiful wood metal accents stitching over here uh, and you also have stay the same high quality window controls although this is only auto down and not automatic up uh, and then if you look at the actual seat back here you can see if you want to lift this up you can to reveal a little bit more storage ignore this right here this is just a two-way radio that gmc put in for us when we were off-roading but it gives you a little bit of storage under there when you push this back down. There's also some hidden storage right here if you wanna hide a few things that uh, out of sight. This is actually a really great feature. It's also on this side as well. If you fold this down, there's also an armrest. It gives you two, two cup holders. The truck is so wide, as you can see, you can easily fit three full-size adults across. And then over here, you can see you have uh, storage here for cup holders. You have three level heated rear seats, two USB charging ports. You also have rear seat air vents. Unlike competitors like from Ram, where you can get cooled second row seats, unfortunately, GMC does not offer that. And this window here, it does slide open, but only Toyota, and technically they don't have a heavy duty version of the Tundra allows you to actually have the roll down window. But overall, if you need to use this as a family vehicle with all this legroom and all this space, you can certainly do so in the Sierra HD. So here we are in the very thoroughly revised heavy duty version of the Sierra. As you guys know, this got a big refresh for 2024 in terms of the styling on the outside, in terms of the interior. It also got the first ever AT4X trim level. Now we're gonna take this vehicle out on an off-road course later on, but I wanted to start off, of course, out on the road because this model here that we're driving has the 6.6 .6 liter turbo diesel Duramax V8 uh, with 470 horsepower and eight and 975 pound feet of torque. Now we are at around 4,000 feet above sea level. So I've never zero to 60 tested this kind of a truck, but let's go ahead and see what we can get here. We have it in four wheel drive automatic mode. We'll brake torque it, or now we do. And you can feel that torque, just a wave of torque. Remember this is a diesel engine though, so it doesn't need to put, it doesn't need to rev up that high. Zero to 60 in 7.2. 29 seconds, 7.3 seconds, which I think is actually perfectly quick. I mean, remember, this is a truck that weighs nearly 9,000 pounds, especially if you guys add in the AEV upgrades, you're looking at a 9,000 pound, over 9,000 pound truck. So this is a heavy, big truck. It's 250 inches long overall. It's over 83 inches wide. So you kind of have to get used to piloting around a vehicle like th this big. I mean, it's bigger than even those uh, half ton trucks, which is just crazy to think about. But overall, it's a relatively easy truck to drive. I actually want to try another zero to 60. That's the beauty about being in Montana here. There's so many straight roads here where there's literally no traffic. We're just going to floor it this time. I'm not going to brake torque it. It takes a little bit of a second to get going. It actually was way quicker when I brake torqued it, surprisingly. 
it literally just holds it at around 3,000 RPM, 8.08 .08 there. So when you brake torque it, you shave about a half a second off the zero to 60 time uh, because I guess you're giving the turbos a chance to spool up in advance. But this 10-speed Allison transmission, I have to say I do love this 10-speed transmission. It's smooth, it's quick, it's responsive. Uh, it doesn't have any paddle shifters, but it does have a manual control here on the column shifter. Uh, but overall, it's the perfect partner. It puts this engine right in the meat of the power band, and you're really going to appreciate the smoothness of it because this is a diesel engine. It's designed to give you all that low end torque. I mean, the red line is 4,500 RPM, but in reality, if I put my foot down here, it doesn't let it rev past 3,000 really. Yeah, it shifts at around 3,000 RPM. So um, that's the beauty about this kind of engine is it doesn't have to work quite as hard. And even though they don't rate the fuel economy of, of a truck like this because it's so heavy, uh, it's actually going to be you know, probably comparable to the gas V8. It may actually get better fuel efficiency than the gas V8. So the diesel essentially gives you twice the torque, uh, a little bit more horsepower, but it should give you the like similar or slightly better fuel economy. And it also just kind of gives you that that ease of or that, that effortless feel. That's what you're looking for with a vehicle like this. So overall, though, even though we've got these all-terrain tires, there are 33s on this model here because this one does not have the AEV upgrade package. I have to say, it rides surprisingly well. We don't have any, we don't even have anything in the bed. This truck will haul will haul around 3,300 pounds of crap in the bed, uh, but it goes down the road with a ride quality that I wasn't expecting, honestly, for something this big. Um, we do have the Multimatic DSSV dampers, so that is doing its job to soak up all the bumps. Although this is a very smooth road that we're on right now, I'm sitting here getting a massage in these seats. I love the fact that the seats have a massaging function. It's one of the few heavy-duty trucks out there, I believe, that gives you the AT4X's capability with the massaging seat function uh, and along with the new tech features. I love the new 13.4 inch display here, the 12.3 inch display here. It's just a really nice place to spend time. And I think those of you who have never driven you know, in, a, in heavy, a heavy duty truck, you'll be surprised to see the amount of luxury that's kind of built into this thing. It just feels a lot more, you know, upscale and, and premium than you'd expect it to. I mean, it better considering uh, the price of this vehicle. Now, the heavy-duty model does make do with some changes. It does have a recirculating ball-type steering, so it's not the most precise steering, although I will say the ratio is quick enough. Uh, it's got an independent front but a solid axle rear suspension. As I go around this sharper turn here, surprisingly, it actually does a really good job of managing that corner. It doesn't feel as cumbersome as I thought it would feel considering the size of this truck. Now, what you do have to get used to when you're piloting a truck this big is obviously the uh, size of the vehicle. So it doesn't really turn on a dime, obviously. I'm trying to see if I can find a place to just make a quick little U-turn here. You can see here, if I make this turn here, let's make a three, point. it's gonna be literally be at least a three point turn. I mean, this is a pretty wide road. So it would be nice if GMC put something like four wheel steering on this truck. But again, everything's kind of to a price point and such, but put my foot down here, plenty of low end torque, and then once the turbo kicks in, it feels fast. And also, it makes a good sound. I mean, it has the sounds of a diesel, but these modern diesels have just gotten so refined. There's very little vibration through the seats, through the pedals, through the steering wheel. And then you just ride that wave of torque. It just pushes you back in its seat. And as you guys saw, zero to 60 in the low seven second ranges is impressive considering how big this truck is. So out on the road, the manners, the road manners of the AT4X are quite impressive. But let's go ahead and see uh, what this thing is like off-road because it, again, nearly, it has nearly a foot of ground clearance. And I suspect it's going to be one of the most capable big trucks that I've ever driven. So this is the first ever heavy duty Sierra with the AT4X badge. So you better believe that that badge is gonna give this thing some pretty incredible off-road capability. And while we already drove this truck out on the road, GMC has set up this uh, really great off-road course here on this ranch where we've got some elevation, we've got some rocks, we've got some really steep inclines and declines. Uh, and it's really gonna test out the capability of this truck. Now, uh, this thing has a full-time four-wheel drive system. so. And it also has a rear locker. It's got 14 different camera views. And I'm definitely using those camera views right now because remember, this is a heavy duty truck. It is big, it is wide, and you're gonna be uh, having some moments where you can't actually see over the hood when you're off-roading this truck. But the camera views, which have really great resolution, really help you kind of point the truck where you need it to go. And we're also utilizing that nearly foot of ground clearance, which is definitely going to be helpful, along with the boron steel skid plates. Now, I have to say, I have the truck in four-wheel low right now. It's in its off-road setting, and 
it puts the power down really well. I mean, there haven't really been any points where we had to like struggle for traction or grip. The Multimatic DSSV dampers do a good job of soaking up the bumps. Uh, and this truck really just kind of eats it up. It's amazing to me how something so big and so heavy can kind of get through this so easily. Uh, and it really shows you the kind of dedication and the capabilities that the GMC team is really putting forth in these AT4X models. So for the last part of this trail, as you can see, I've switched sides and uh, my editor Rob is now s sitting behind the uh, steering wheel. And we're going down this really, really steep uh, hill and it basically almost feels like you're at the top of a hill for a roller coaster uh, and the car itself does have or the truck itself does have a hill descent control system and it basically holds the speed at one or two miles an hour which Rob has it set to two miles an hour right now which is really really slow but literally it's showing us at a 24 25 percent descent 26 percent descent and uh 27. yeah 27 usually rob would follow me down the hill but i know that if he did he'd probably fall on his ass and hurt hurt himself or kill himself or something so we're not going to do that but you can see uh this is definitely nerve-wracking for those of you who are afraid of heights this would definitely make you scared uh this is probably one of the steepest descents that we've ever done on an off-road trail but again we've got these uh, mud terrain tires. We've got an excellent hill descent control system that's literally modulating the brakes and keeping us from going sideways and falling down the hill. And it's always kind of hard to show on camera, but again, now we're almost like look. We're planting the grill into the. Yeah, it looks the like the truck's going to crash into the ground. That's how steep it was, but it's not. It's not only the. the, the <laughs> the angle of the hill, like it's all loose shale, it's all loose rocks. Yep, it's all loose rocks. So earlier we were actually driving on some snowy covered rocks and thank God it's not snowing here because <laughs> it would just be bad. But uh, as you can see, the truck just kind of eats it up and it's amazing to me how capable something so big like this is. And it really shows you what GMC, the team is very capable of with producing these AT4X models. So again, if you guys are looking for something in this class of vehicle, I mean, there's the Ram Power Wagon and there's the F250 Tremor, uh, but those are essentially either packages or uh, a dedicated trim line, but the compared to the Ram, this uh, GMC kind of preserves a lot of the capability that you expect from something with a heavy duty badge on it. And uh, for those of you, again, who need to be able to tow those extra heavy loads, but want to go a little further off the beaten path, uh, this truck can certainly do that for you. So after spending the day driving one of the biggest factory-built off-road capable trucks out there, the Sierra 2500HD AT4X AEV, I have to say GMC has successfully captured that AT4X magic in a much larger package. Obviously, if you guys are looking for one of the most off-road capable trucks, either the light duty or the Canyon AT4X is probably going to be a little bit more capable. But if you actually need the off-road capability of a three-quarter ton truck, this truck, again, gives that to you and it also allows you to take it further off the beaten path and unlike some of its competitors where you have to give up either the payload capacity or the towing capacity or the diesel engine option gmc allows you to have both and that's kind of the beauty about the at4x gmc has always been being about premium brand however in this truck here they give you all the capability the premiumness and you don't have to sacrifice uh, that much considering uh, what you can get with the at4x model now obviously um, I was only on a short drive for this vehicle, so at some point I'm gonna get one for a full week to test, and I'm gonna be able to do a little bit more extensive fuel economy testing on it. I'm gonna see what it's like to live with on a daily basis. But if you guys are interested in picking up one of these heavy duty AT4X models, they are heading to dealerships uh, as we speak, and pricing has already been announced. Basically, if you guys wanna get a standard heavy duty 2500, those started at around $45,000. $45, However, if you guys want the AT4X, remember AT4X is supposed to mean premium and off-road capability. Uh, this truck here, starts at around $85,000 for just the regular AT4X uh, without the AEV package, and that's with just the gas 6.6 liter V8 engine. If you guys want the diesel, that's another $10,000 on top of the $85,000 price. If you guys want the AEV upgrades, which is again, the bigger tires, the boron steel skid plates, the steel bumpers, you can also get the come up winch if you guys want that as well. This model is going to add another $9,300 extra to the price. So all in, this one that we're looking at here comes to a grand total of around $106,000. I know, $106,000 is, is a lot of money, but she's a big truck with lots of capability, lots of luxury features. And really, when you start comparing it to competitors like the Ford F-250 Tremor or a Ram Power Wagon, the GMC is a little bit more expensive, but I'd argue that with the extra luxury features and premium touches that it offers, it's probably worth that extra cash. And again, you don't have to give 
give up any of that capability. With all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 GMC Sierra HD 2500 HT4X AEV. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.